कृपाए सुख उपजे संत कृपा थी सर काम संत कृपा थी पामी ए पोरन पुरुषोत्तम धाम काम दुदा कल्प तरु पारस चिंता मनी चार संत समान थे एक नहीं मैं मन मा करो विचार बोलो हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जय गणश्याम महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय सुप्रीम ऑल माइटी लॉर्ड स्वामी नारायण द पाथ मेकर टू आवर लिबरेशन पूज्य पाद गुरु जी पूज्य ऋषि स्वामी पूज्य रणछोड़ भगत पूज्य आशित भाई and all of you the viewers my humble jay swami nare let's go back in time today 2300 years ago 2300 years ago it's a time of alexander the great in gujarati his name is sikandar but in english history he's known as alexander the great alexander the great took his 60000 soldiers from his home country greece and decided to conquer the whole world this was his mission this was his goal this was his dream to conquer the whole world so he took his 60000 soldiers and decided to leave Greece and conquer the world as he started conquering he conquered the countries of Iraq he conquered the countries of Israel he conquered Turkey and as time went on he slowly but consistently conquered many many countries at one time he entered the region of punjab in hindustan and there he conquered puru raja of punjab and then he entered a small village by the name of patla puri so there he entered the village and he found out that there was a saint living there who is omniscient meaning he can tell the past present and future so he asked us the saint a question now before i tell you what he asked if you were in his shoes what would you ask Alexander the Great did not ask for what was I in the past life. Alexander did not ask what will what country will I conquer next. And Alexander did not ask that at what age will I conquer the whole world. But what alexander the great did ask was when will my death be when is my death this is the question he asked the saint the saint told him that you are 33 years old right now and after 120 days your death will be upon you you will die in 120 days and not only that but you will not reach your home country greece to visit or even meet your family your close relatives and friends you'll you will not reach your country alexander the great had trust in the words of the saint so he left immediately Punjab and he cut his horses night and day with his soldiers 
to try to reach Greece. Day and night, he rode his horses. Day and night, nonstop. He had trust in the saints' words. That's why he knew that he had to reach before the 120 days expired. So, he traveled night and day. But halfway through his travels, he became extremely ill. So much so that he could not perform anything. He could not do anything. So what he did was he, he called the world's best doctors from all around the world to come and try to, Ill, to, try to cure his illness so he can get be better on his journey and continue his journey to Greece. The doctors tried. Profusely, they tried. They tried all kinds of treatments, all kinds of medications, but nothing worked. And after trying and trying, Alexander the Great remembered the, remembered the saint's words, and it was the 119th day. And he remembered that the saint had told him that on the, the 120th day, death will be upon you. So on the 119th day, Alexander called his councilmen, called his soldiers, called his doctors, called everyone that was beside him, and asked, and not only that, but told them that I have conquered the world, but nothing is going to come with me. So, take something that will go with you before you die. The moral is that we have to leave this body one day or another. Even if you become a millionaire, even if you become a billionaire, even if you own enterprises and businesses, yet nothing is going to come with you. It will all end one day. Even if you become a doctor, you work eight years and become a doctor, and you become the best doctor in the world, yet that status, that level of integrity, that power, you can say, will vanish one day, and it will not come with you at all. So, my question to you today is, what is the greatest fear of humans? Well, let's see. Is it the different types of phobias? For example, claustrophobia, the fear of small enclosed spaces, or arachnophobia, the fear of spiders, or any kind of other fears? I don't think so. Is it losing one's loved ones, one's family, one's close friends? Is that the greatest fear of humans? Not so much so. What about become financially bankrupt? Businesses have to be closed. One does not have a job anymore and is in depression. Is that the greatest fear? I don't think so. The greatest fear of humans is death. Meaning, leaving this body is the hardest thing and is the most fearful thing for all human beings because they know it's coming. They don't know when, but they don't want to leave this body. Due to that, fear can be titled as the greatest human fear for humans. So then, after reading this story of Alexander the Great, I was reminded of a Vachnamrut, of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, that 
gives us a cure for this illness, for this fear that we have. The Vajshramur today is Loya second chapter. And I want to read a question from that. And then we want to hear what Sriji Maharaj has to say about this question. Swami Narayan Hare, the question is, in this satsang, when does a devotee become free from the fear of death and become convinced of his own liberation in this very life? This is the question. When does a devotee become free from death? Free from the fear of death and become convinced that I have attained liberation. I have attained God. When is it possible? Well, Bhagwan says that there's four types of devotees, four types of staunch satsangis that do not fear death anymore. So first I'm going to name them to you. First and foremost, Bhagwan says the one who has faith, such kind of devotee. Number two, the one who has gnan or knowledge. Number three, the one who has courage. And number four, the one who has affection. Now, Bhagwan is saying, the question is, when does a devotee become free? Meaning, Alexander the Great was not a devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan or any type of religious matter, you can say. Yet, he had this advice for the world. But what is Bhagwan keeping a standard at? He's saying a devotee, meaning first and foremost, just to clarify, a devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. First of all, he does puja, daily puja in the morning. Second of all, such a person follows and abides by the Shikshapatri. For example, not eating meat, not drinking alcohol, wearing a kanti, doing tilak channel. These are simple examples of a devotee. Number three, has firm faith in Bhagwan Swami Narayan and believes him to be supreme almighty. And number four, the one who associates with an ekantik sadpurush. These four characteristics are a person who can consider to be a devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. I'm just going on the surface just to give you an overview. I don't want to extend this, but Bhagwan's standards are that a devotee should, what is, what can, the question is, in this satsang, when does a devotee become free from the fear of death? Meaning, a person who is not a devotee, he cannot become free from the fear of death. That's a straight equation right there so there's no way around this you have to become a devotee to become free from the fear of death but after even becoming a devotee you have to have one of these four characteristics that Bhagwan has mentioned in order to become free from the fear of death in order and also to be convinced that my liberation is granted so I'm ex reminded of a story of Bhagwan Buddha. <clears throat> In Buddhism, the religion is based off of Bhagwan Buddha and his philosophy. So, in the time of Bhagwan Buddha, there was this lady by the name of Kesha who had a son that had died. Now, the son had died. And obviously, when any mother's son dies, obviously she becomes miserable, anyone's. And so this mother was miserable. So she cried profusely night and day. And her neighbor right next door witnessed this whole experience. So her neighbor told this lady that Bhagwan Buddha is here in our village. Go and ask him to help you out with this problem. To try to cure your misery. So 
she went to Bhagwan Budh. She had kept her son's dead body just in case if something might have happened. Kind of like a blind hope, you can say. So she went to Bhagwan Budh and she asked, Hey, great Lord, please, my son is dead. Please make him alive again. Now Bhagwan Budh said, I will make him alive again, but only if you get grains from in this village, go home to home and get grains from a home where a, a person has not died there before. So she became ecstatic. She became excited and she went searching, went home to home, home to home and asked for grains. First asked, has anyone in your heredity died here before? And everyone, everywhere she went, she got a reply, yes. Someone has died, my father has died, my grandfather has died, my brother has died, my sister has died, etc. The whole line. So she became tired. After searching the whole village, she did not find one person that did not have a death in their family. So she went back, back to Bhagwan Budh. And she became so tired and she explained her situation that I went everywhere, but I could not find one single family, one single person that had not experienced death in their family. And that's when Bhagwan Budh told her that no one can live forever. This is only and we will only be temporary, temporary members of this world. Why am I telling you this? Because as of right now, as of this age of young adult or even teenagers, we do not see death. We do not even have a vision of death. We feel that death is when we get old when we become 80, 90, and then we experience death. But we do not see death right now because we're too busy going outside in the world, engaging worldly pleasures, going to the movies, hanging out with one's friends. But we do not see death. But my message to all of you is that please do understand just like how Alexander the Great said that take something with you that will come with you in the same way after enjoying everything in this world. My message is death is, will always be upon you, but take something that will come with you. Nevertheless, I'm reminded of Pujya Yogi Swami a great saint in our Sant Mandal of Puja Guruji and all of us. He died about two months ago. But his death was not considered to be death. It was something more, something more special, something divine. I want to tell you my experience, that how I felt. Because since we're talking about death, since Bhagwan is showing us a cure for this illness of fear of death, the perfect example to match is Puja Yogi Swami. Now, I think we did do a lecture upon the remembrance of Puja Yogi Swami right after Swami expired. But to refresh your memory, Puja Yogi Swami was burned very badly while in India see they don't have nice facilities like here in America where when you just turn the knob warm water comes or when you even turn the knob even water comes out this is how nice the facility is but in India to warm the water they had boilers outside and you had to manually 
light the fire, and then boil the water. So, Swami was outside. It was obviously the winter time there in, in India, and he was uh, igniting the boiler, and some, I think, petroleum must have gotten on him, and his whole body ignited like a flame. Now, the flame ignited him, and he was probably on fire for at least about three to five minutes. But after the fire had extinguished, he was taken to the hospital, and the doctors diagnosed that he had 70% of his body was burned to the third degree, which is the worst. It's said that only about 40% if one's body is only 40% burned of third degree manner, one can survive, but not 70% 70, 70 is very vital. But <clears throat> by the prayer of many, many devotees in Puja Guruji, Swami stayed in the hospital for one and a half month, constantly remembering God, constantly remembering Guruji. Puja Rushival Swami, who will be giving a discourse right after myself, he was in... Puja Swami's services for a short period of time. But Puja Swami also experienced that Yogi Swami continually remembered Bhagwan and Guruji and had strong faith in them. That's when I remembered that this Vachnamrut, Loya's second chapter, a devotee of God, meaning Bhagwan is using devotee, but that also is standard for saint or devotee. Devotee means follower. Anyone who is a follower can be considered into this category. So, I was reminded of this Vachramrut that when Puji Yogi Swami was in his deathbed, Puji Rushi Swami told me that Puji Yogi Swami only had Guruji and Bhagwan in his mind, his heart, and on his tongue. That's it. Nothing else. 24 hours, nothing else. And that's when I was reminded that <clears throat> Bhagwan's question, that in this satsang, when does a devotee become free from the fear of death and become convinced of his own liberation in this very life? And out of these four components, four characteristics or four types, one being faith, two being uh, knowledge, three being courage, fourth being affection, Puja Yogi Swami is the one who fits in the category of faith. Most. He had the other three, for sure. He had knowledge that I am the soul, I am not the body. He had courage that Puja Guruji will come, Puja Maharaj will come and take me to Akshardham. And he had affection for all the santos, he was remembering santos constantly. But out of these four, the most vital or the most influential characteristic type was faith. When faith came, everything else comes. So, for this Vachramrut, for this lecture, for our life, let us remember that even if we're young, even when we're, if even if we are teenagers, even we, if we are still at that age where we have everything in the world, we're on top of the world. We have a nice business. We have a nice home. We have a nice family. Let me remind you that death is upon you. So before death comes, please. Engage and engross and try to become one of these four types of devotees so you become free from the fear of death and you also become convinced of your liberation. Saying this, my humble Jai Swami Narayan. Now, Pujya Rushivalab Swami will come and give his discourse on bhakti.
ವರ್ಣಿವೇಶರಮಣೀಯದರ್ಶನ ಮಂದಹಾಸರುಚಿರಾನಂಬುಜ ಪೂಜಿ ಸುರನರೋತ್ತಮೇರ್ಮುದಾ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಶ್ರೀಹರಿಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀ ಜಯ ಓಲ್ ಮೈಟಿ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಅವರ್ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಗುರುಜಿ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಭಗತ್ಜಿ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಡ್ಯೂಟಿ ಎಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಮೈ ಹಂಬಲ್ ಜೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಡಿವೋಸನ್ ದೆನ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಟೈಪ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಿವೋಸನ್ ನಾವು ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅನ್ನರ್ ದ ಟೈಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಿವೋಸನ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅರ್ಚನಮ್ ಸಪೋಸ್ ಥಿಂಕ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಸಿಟಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದೀಸ್ ಅಸೆಂಬ್ಲಿ ಹಾಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅಕಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಅವರ್ ಇನ್ವಿಟೇಷನ್ Obama is Obama will come here in our assembly and from the front door he gradually come on the stage as per our arrangement what is your behavior in the assembly no doubt as you are american indian you may sit properly without any noise and while obama obama will walking on the path at the time you all may concern concentrate only on his coming then after when he on the stage when he take his seat at that time you may give give him standing ovation why because in this way you try to exp- explain your joy for the obama similarly when we welcome the bhagwan in our heart in our temple we should also offer him something to praise for him if in this world in this country standing ovation is the method to greeting someone someone special similarly there are so many things in spiritual world to greet bhagwan to greet satpurush now you are thinking that what is you are discussing about archana and you are discussing the story of greeting someone is there any concern between these two things yes because what is archanam archanam is nothing but to apply sandal wood paste on the forehead of the bhagwan this is a kind of greetings this is a cr- kind of praise praising to bhagwan but if we apply sandal wood paste on the forehead of bhagwan with our love for him from our heart that will become our, our devotion because by applying sandalwood paste on the forehead of bhagwan this way our heart is attached to the form of god our mind is remind reminding the form of bhagwan our sense is like our hand or fingers also touches the form uh, touches the bhagwan's forehead so that will also become pure sanctified 
दिस इज वॉर्थ अर्चनम भक्ति बिकॉज वाइल एप्लाइंग सैंडल पेस्ट ऑन द फॉर हेड ऑफ भगवान वी डायरेक्टली अटैच टू द फॉर्म ऑफ भगवान दैट इज वाई दिस इज कॉल एज डिवोसन बट विदाउट रिमेंबरिंग भगवान विदाउट रेकग्नाइजिंग द रियल ग्लोरी ऑफ भगवान इफ वी अप्लाई सैंडल वुड पेस्ट ऑन द फॉर हेड ऑफ भगवान एट द टाइम वेदर इट बिकम आवर डिवोशन और नॉट इफ एनी ग्रेट पर्सन वेदर सैनेटर और कांग्रेस मैन कम हियर इन आवर असेंबली no doubt as our rules after stuti we gradually stand up for dhanvat of dhanvat uh, before bhagwan and at the same time we stand but at the time that is our standing obeisance for the uh, congressman or senator no because we don't know that person whether that person is congressman or senator similarly if we apply sandal wood paste on the forehead of bhagwan but we don't know that how great this bhagwan is we at the time we have no remembrance of the glory of bhagwan then really think that is our devotion or not that is our merely labor work nothing more than that but we should remember that this is the god of gods this is the cause of everything whether it's happiness or misery whether it's power or powerlessness or weakness whether it prosperity or poverty but bhagwan is the cause of everything sometimes we have such glory in our mind but we have not faith in the form of bhagwan that our hari krishna maharaj our ganesha maharaj means our bhagwan swami narayan is the supreme god sometimes we have some doubt in our mind because this is what the maya of bhagwan to understand his real glory there are so many reasons behind that because some says that bhagwan himself had written in the sikshapatri that our ish dev is sri krishna bhagwan the day before yes- yesterday uh, our amar bhagat that dentist he had asked the question the same question that bhagwan had written in the sikshapatri that 108 words in that words he uh, he had written that our ish to dev is sri krishna bhagwan then why are you saying that bhagwan swami narayan is supreme in fact he he was he was the devotee of sri krishna bhagwan but at the time we should understand if we have such vision to understand his divine words then we can easily understand his glory his supremacy even by that same words because to understand these words we have to refer the words before that words and the verses after that verses in the 108 words bhagwan says this six this sri krishna bhagwan is param brahma means the supreme god is bhagwan is purushottam narayan and is our ishta dev and is the source of all incarnations see which sri krishna bhagwan 
the form of sri krishna bhagwan which is the cause of all incarnations here clearly written in same words but sometimes merely by listening sri krishna the word sri krishna our mind is got some doubt but think simply there are not only one asid bhai in this state or in this assembly there are many asid bhagat right the same way there are so many persons who had the same name krishna bhagwan swami naran had also many many names and according to his one his childhood past times he had name of krishna hari and hari krishna we should understand in these words that this sri krishna is our own lord bhagwan swami naran and if we cannot understand merely by this much information then we should refer another words the next in the words of 109 bhagwan had written that sri krishna when he is with radha then we should understand that is radha krishna when he is with lakshmi ji at the time we should understand that he is lakshmi narayan so which sri krishna is with, is with radha and the same sri krishna is with lakshmi ji and more than that when he is with arjun he is known as nar narayan so this is not the here is not the talk about the sri krishna which is at the time before 500 5000 years ago but this is the supreme personality of godhead who is the cause of all causes which is described in the 108th verse in this way in this manner in the context of these words our supreme bhagwan bhagwan swami narayan he himself assume a form of sri krishna and that sri krishna is when he is with radha we understand our bhagwan is also known as radha krishna but he is the supreme bhagwan he is not the sri krishna before 5000 years ago that is not the supreme person but the cause of that sri krishna that is our supreme bhagwan that is our bhagwan swami narayan this is what the understanding no doubt some may argue that in the vachanamrut bhagwan says i am a devotee of sri krishna bhagwan due to the mercy of nar narayan dev i have attained this or you may attain this i am a mukt this all are nothing but a jungle jungle of words no doubt all the words of bhagwan himself but still we have to be careful to understand bhagwan's word otherwise in the jungle there may be a trees of neem tree banyan tree people tree red oak etc but if you want to read under a banyan tree then we have to understand his characteristics similarly whether we have no knowledge of the characteristics of bhagwan's supremacy means the characteristic of a person who is supreme who is transcend all the other things but simple logic if we have 
the same person asit bhai think in the house you are not a businessman you are a father you may be a husband you may be a son of your father and mother but in your star you are not anybody's father anybody's husband anybody's son but at your business place you are a businessman your employee cannot understand you as his father or his brother but he always consider you as his boss means a perfect businessman right but in your house your children cannot know you as a businessman he always come to you as you are father if you come to your parents at the time in your mind you have no a trace of thought that you are a businessman but when you meet your parents you think that i am a son of my parents and at the same time your parents also realize that this is my son this is not a business person and before your parents you never say that i am not your son i am businessman and in your business place in front of your employee you not say that i am father i am a brother but you say i am a business person i am your boss similarly bhagwan swami narayan has explained the same thing in the vachanamrut sometimes he becomes anybody's father just like you in the house you become a father of your children in the house similarly bhagwan also explain himself as duty of bhagwan even though he was the supreme he is the supreme personality of godhead he is the god of gods he is the cause of causes but still just see when you are playing with your children you may become like a children in fact you have more strength more power more understanding more knowledge everything more than the children but still when you are playing with children you become like a children just like you are you have no more strength more power more intellect more understanding and become like a children similarly bhagwan has some time playing with children like us if we have no such understanding more understanding to understand the scriptures word the divine episodes of bhagwan divine words of bhagwan at the time bhagwan becomes like us and he says no i am not the supreme bhagwan i am the devotee of bhagwan but in fact just like a father who is playing with children he is the father he has more power he has more intellect he has more strength he has more understanding even he has capacity to produce more infants but at the time he forget all the things why he know father know one day when the children attain some understanding when gradually they become develop become older automatically they can understand that i am a father i am not like not a child like there bhagwan also understands when my devotee whether today they 
cannot understand me, the Supreme Bhagwan. But one day, when they attain some understanding by keeping the company of Sadhu, by listening scripture from Sadhu, one day they will become mature, mature in this satsang, mature in understanding. That day, they will also understand me that this is the Supreme Bhagwan. And in this way, Bhagwan has described himself sometimes as, as a devotee of Bhagwan, as a perfect endeavor, perfect aspirant to attain Bhagwan. Sometimes he put his own self as a liberated soul, means mukta. And sometimes he had also explained that I am the Supreme Personality of Godhead. If we have such vision to grasp the Bhagwan's word of Vajranamrit or Sikshapratri, we can really understand the real glory of Bhagwan, the supremacy of Bhagwan. And when we have this understanding in our mind that whether the same words in the Vachanamrut or Sikshapatri that I am duty of Sri Krishna Bhagwan or any other avatars or any kinds of words whether we listen from anybody's or from scriptures but if we have faith we have attained conviction by understanding that Bhagwan's word in this practical manner then with this our faith our devotion become firm because without faith whether we are doing any spiritual activity that is merely labor but not devotion so now we have understood Bhagwan, his real glory, his supremacy. And then, if merely we apply only sandable page on the father of Bhagwan, that will become our devotion. But otherwise, merely just seeing the Bhagwan's forehead empty and we just apply it, that is not our devotion. So now let's understand the words of Bhagwan in this way, in this practical manner, so that we can have the firm faith in Bhagwan's form, Bhagwan's glory, because the faith zone is the safe zone. If we have perfect, unflinching faith in the form of Bhagwan, then everything else, devotion, dharma, knowledge of, Bhagwan's glory and our own self that we are not this body, we are the soul and final detachment. Thus everything what we can see that is not the perfect things but everything is one day will destroy. This all kind of virtues we will attain if we have firm, firm faith in the form of Bhagwan. This is only the way to progress in the path of devotion. So now let's try to understand the supremacy of Bhagwan in this way so that we can develop our heart in such a way that our heart automatically attached to the form of Bhagwan. That's it. Jai Swami Narayan. Sri Patim Sri Dharam Sarvadevaswaram Bhakti Dhar Madmajam Vasudevam Hari Madhavam Keshavam Kamadam Karanam Swamina Rayanam Nilakandham Bhaje Sri Hari Krishna Maharajani Jai.